Some people don't get it, you know, and that's okay, you don't have to get it. But I'm going to tell a little bit of a story just so that um, another survivor out there finds their path, <laughs> their purpose, in whatever way that looks like for them. Regurgitating my path, like that's just so condescending and invalidating. But anyway, okay, I'm going to get on track here. So coming from a narcissistic family system, and my mother was, um, well is, she's still alive, a sociopath and a narcissist. Her primary goal wasn't just to give me a trauma hood and destroy my childhood. It was to ensure that I never became anything that I wanted to be. She was actively crushing my dreams. As a little girl, I wanted to go to Juilliard. Everybody in the family knew this. This was like a thing. Well, everyone who was an adult anyway. And I was always very involved in anything music that I could get my hands on. And like, I had a guitar, I had a flute. Um, I played a chromo harp for a, P a concert on PBS that I got into when they went around to all the schools in our district. I was one of two kids that got, got in in our district. My mother, of course, didn't show up for that. It was televised, they made a record. I was gifted. When I went to middle school, I played flute and I ended up my first month out of the gate achieving second chair. The next year, my mother put me in a school with no music program. Coming from that environment, then losing the rest of my childhood trauma hood to the streets at 13 because I couldn't cope with that abuse anymore and I ended up running away. I had to find a way to make it make sense and nothing is ever going to do that. So then I had to find a way to make peace with what I had been through. And it took me a really long time to figure it out, to figure out what was my purpose, my chosen purpose going to be. This is my chosen purpose. So I wrote my book because I couldn't find a book written by somebody who had run away from home and survived that gave me a feeling of it's not my fault and told the reasons why for the people who don't understand and provide me with the healing that I was looking for. So I wrote that book to heal myself, which it did a lot of that, and also as a tool for others. That expanded my purpose into ending up working with organizations like Covenant House, raising awareness and raising funds, which expanded my purpose in ending up on a bunch of shows and public speaking to first responders, to educators, to social workers, to people who deal with children and don't understand fully what those kids are going through from a survivor-led perspective so that they can understand how to better understand and connect to these children in order to be able to reach them and actually really help them. Which then led to what I'm doing now. Because as I began telling my story and shedding the shame that I had been carrying around due to the fact that I believed that what I went through and what was done to me was my fault, I also began to understand the power of sharing and how healing that could be not just for me, but for others. And do you know what all of that actually translated into? It took that really awful start in life that I had and turned it into something with a good purpose. It took the power away from my mother and instead of me being damaged and destroyed because of what she did to me, I took all of those things that she tried so hard to harm me with and I use them in a way that is healing. You can call it regurgitating and you can tell me it's not my purpose, but at the end of the day, you don't know anything about me. Because if you did, if you had empathy, if you had even the desire to understand, you would have come here with a question instead of a judgment.